Today, we have a global society where, uh, with all the efforts of multilateral institutions, wonderful efforts of organizations like those represented in this room, I think everyone will agree, we don't really have anyone who's in charge at the global level. We don't have any individuals or institutions that have the authority to ultimately direct the way the world should change its behavior to address pressing challenges that we have today. And the issue is, what do you do? What, do we, what type of leadership is effective in addressing issues where nobody specifically is in charge, but, but many, many agencies in many different sectors have to cooperate to make this happen? And this is the question that we're asking because we think it, it's so relevant to our world dilemma today. The headlines in the paper were 11,000 climate scientists from around the world released a, a, a paper asserting that we have a planetary emergency on climate change. We know very well that the scientific community has been working for decades to communicate this. And as heartening it is to see 11,000 scientists coming out, we also know that it's naive to expect that one more proclamation by the scientific community is going to get us the change, which is why people like Greta Thunberg and the Fridays for the Future are attracting so much attention and hope. Because instead of representing the experts in academia who are talking about this problem, they're representing at the other end of the spectrum. The new generation who doesn't claim expertise in anything but are the future inheritors of what we do today saying something has radical has to change. So the subject of leadership which we're talking today really spans everything from the expert knowledge in our scientific communities to the next generations that have to be mobilized in order to make things happen much faster than they do today. And with this is coming at a particular time it's coming at a time we all know of unprecedented speed, unprecedented complexity at the global level, unprecedented uncertainty about where we're going to end up and, and how we're going to get there. Uh, and the challenges, whether they're in the field of uh, ecology or in ec rising economic inequality or migration or cultural tensions or social or retreat from democracy, I'm American, which we see uh, in, in, in going on in different places, we've got a multi-dimensional complex of challenges that's unprecedented uh, at the level where we don't have the institutions and maybe we don't have the knowledge of how do you govern a global community under these circumstances and take it to the next level of coordinated and synergistic action. Now clearly, the organizations represented in this room and others who don't have a great deal of knowledge and experience that they have drawn from their own work in different countries, in different sectors. And we're not, uh, in fact, why we wanted, why we're doing this is we want to draw on, we want to consult you and draw on your expertise and your experience and say, what can we learn? from green revolutions or American civil rights movements uh, or even the New Deal which uh, solved the, the worst banking crisis in U.S. history or many, many others, uh, the, uh, the work of WHO on AIDS or oral rehydration or the work of OHCHR on uh, dealing with horrendous refugee uh, problems. You have rich experience. What we're hoping is that by consultations with you and other sectors of the society, uh, that we can draw on some conclusions that go beyond the traditional conception of leadership as to what the individual does or what an individual does within his organization or what uh, political leaders do within their national framework with what we can do at the global level. Uh, to move forward very rapidly uh, to meet multiple challenges of, uh, of greatest importance and uh, power at a time when, for whatever reason, uh, uh, we have a, a tendency to discredit and retreat from the idea that multilateralism is going to solve our problems, if anything, instead of strengthening 
our international organizations and our coordination of them, we're working in an environment, we're flowing, we're going against the stream. So therefore, we've got to look at how we leverage all the knowledge we have and all the power and capacity we have in the most effective possible way. And there, we can learn a lot from traditional models of leadership, but we don't think we can be limited. We think we have to, with the help of all those involved, we have to rethink even our concepts of leadership because what we're talking about is leading the society, not just leading uh, groups or organizations. How do we do that? How do we bring global society not only along with us, but release the energy and movement of the society so that we have to struggle to keep up with their demands and their expectations, as we've seen in the past. This initiative actually started a long time ago. In 2013, uh, we partnered with the UN here in Geneva for an international conference. We had about 200 diplomats uh, and representatives of NGOs and uh, in international organizations to look at what we call global social challenges and opportunities. And as you can see, they covered the full spectrum uh, and we had groups on all of them. And the last six years, we've been working, okay, we know we've got problems and everybody, there are enough people working on them uh, and we know there are a lot of solutions, but how, we, how do we make it happen? And why hasn't it happened already? Why haven't we seen a lot more progress on these areas? Is there something missing? And if there's something missing, there must be knowledge and experience that we're not fully drawing on that can help us catalyze it and make it happen. And that's the purpose of our uh, discussions here. This is the context for our, uh, for our project. We're not specializing in any particular field. We're looking at the need for coordinated leadership at, that covers all the sectors, all the fields, even with the SDGs, which are an unprecedented example of leadership at the global level, uh, the idea of the global community of 193 countries coming together and agreeing on a set of goals and 169 targets uh, is absolutely unprecedented. And we all know that agreeing on, it's a great achievement, it, that it shows that universality we have heard of shared needs and goals, but we also know that the implementation of these 17 goals uh, is a very complex issue. It requires a lot of knowledge we don't have, especially when we look at the interactions and interdependence between these goals. That's where, so this is a complex system, uh, and we don't know what will happen when we move on one area, we do know, when we move in progress on some areas, that's going to result in conflicts and further problems in others. And so we really need to think about, it's no longer leadership in a sector, leadership in an organization, leadership in a, a narrow field of responsibility. We've got to look at leadership in its widest context of the interdependence between different sectors of the global society and how do we coordinate and uh, progress so that we're not going forward in some areas and backward in the others. And there are many organizations working on different dimensions of this who recognize the conflicts, recognize the problems, but even when we understand them, we're still gonna need a way, how are we gonna coordinate it? How are we gonna move in, in some uh, agreement on it? So when we talk about leadership, it's not just a question of individuals. Setting goals is a form of leadership, shared, creating a shared vision, projecting values that we all share. Organizations working together are a, a power, can be a powerful form of leadership, as many of you have seen, and seen even though you're uh, relative to the, the, the scope of the world and the resources you have, you've seen how international organizations can play a catalytic role way beyond their mandate, their financial resources uh, and all as a catalyst for something larger themselves. Uh, values can do that, ideas can do that. Uh, even measures, indicators of progress. When we started this project, one of the requests of the Director General was Please, please be sure that we also talk about the need to replace uh, GDP as our, uh, as our measure. 
because here's a measure that's categorically contradictory to uh, achieving many of the SDGs that we hold so, uh, so dear that we, we must do. So we know that also is a leadership role in getting an, an, the right types of measures. The right types of theories in our international group on economics, we're arguing that unless we change our theoretical conceptions, we're not going to get the changes in policies and institutions we need because the institutions are relying on the theory uh, of academia as the justification for what they're doing. Uh, and unless we challenge the theory itself, so this goes all the way back to our educational institutions, to our research institutions and all, and even to the type of thinking we do. We need to, we need to be teaching our youth in, a, in the educational system uh, to look at things in a much more global, inclusive way as complex systems, uh, as human-based systems, not mechanical uh, uh, apparatus and how do we put the humanity back into our education and our social sciences. All of this is part of it. So we're not excluding everything, but we're looking, we're trying to look at the, all the dimensions and see what we can learn from what has uh, worked in the past. And finally, how do we get, rouse the, 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 the public uh, to act in a way to actually carry out the changes in culture, the changes in behavior that we need. We have examples of all these things in the past. Not at the level and magnitude that we need today, but we have enough knowledge if we mine that knowledge and systematically apply it collectively. And that's the purpose of this project. So let me tell you a little bit more about the project. We conceive of it with five stages. The first is uh, consultations with the stakeholders, and that's going to take place for about a year. And uh, this is the, the purpose of this briefing was really to start those discussions. We want to find out from you who are interested and willing how we can consult with you, how we can learn from your experiences, what you have to share with us, and how we can do that over the next one year. Then a year from now, and I think the dates have already been finalized, October, at least provisionally, October 27th and 28th, which is just the week of the uh, 75th anniversary of the UN uh, on the 20th, which happens to fall on a Saturday, the 24th. Uh, but we'll have a, a large gathering here uh, in, at the UN in Geneva uh, of representatives of all these stakeholder groups and others to feed back the results of these consultations and to project them to a larger community. There'll also be a final written report which we are inviting our stakeholder partners to contribute to as you and many others we're in touch with, I mentioned a few uh, as we go on. And then after the conference and the report, for us, it's really just the beginning, because the question is, how do, we, how do we reach out to educational institutions, training institutes, how do we use the media, how do we use the arts and other forms of communication to take the knowledge that comes from the project and reach out to, as far as we can, to the global community. So if we have media and uh, experts, and many of your organizations have a lot of experience with this, we would welcome uh, knowledge of that as well. And then to see specifically as we go through, what can this project contribute to the achievement of the SDGs? SDGs is not, uh, it's, a, it's a big enough target if, uh, to be, if we're not exclusively on that, but if, if we can contribute to that, we would feel certainly the project's been very beneficial. So here's a list of the, uh, the stakeholder groups that we have on our list, the international organizations, that's the significance of this as the first step, this meeting, nation states, uh, educational institutions. We're already talking to a number of international institutions about partnering with us uh, on what we can learn from what, what the universities are doing. Science and technology, we are in you know, further, we're in pretty far along in discussions with IEEE which some of you may know is the largest professional organization of engineers in the world, 
about 400,000 members, and we've had detailed discussions with them, uh, and they're interested to be one of our consulting partners. Uh, with the business and finance community, we are, the Academy was a, a co-organizer of a conference at the UN in New York on September 12th and 13th, uh, looking at the future of finance and capital and how it has to change and how we will try to influence the direction. And we have people from the industry who really are convinced that we have to change the direction of how our financial markets and our, our management of, of finance are, are going. So we'll be looking for partners in business and the financial community. Civil society organizations, we have a briefing this afternoon with NGOs who have been invited by uh, the UN for a similar event. Next generation youth groups. We've already started contact and we are, uh, uh, we're through the UN here and in New York looking for which are the organizations that could be most representative who are most committed to addressing uh, the global social challenges. And then to that we have, and after that, media, and, and I would add also the arts, and how we can uh, uh, mobilize the tremendous capacities of the, uh, of the arts to, for, for outreach and communication and understanding. I'm going to end my presentation in this with a set of questions. And they're questions for you and your organizations. And I, we would, I would welcome questions about what I have spoken, but also welcome any experiences or insights you have from your experience, where you are now, or where you have worked before, or where your organizations are working, that you think would be rele relevant to our consultations and the project that we're initiating. So our, for the consultations, our steps are, first of all, to identify partners within UN agencies and national governments who would like to partner with us, have something they would like to contribute, and then we will work with them on how do we do that in the most effective way. Uh, we are not looking for information in the traditional uh, area where we can send a 30-page questionnaire and expect to. What we are interested in is insights from experience. Uh, so if we raise questions, it's designed to encourage our partners to think about these issues and reflect on their own experience and come back to us with what, what they think and what you think is relevant to the project. Uh, at some stage along the way, we'll encourage our uh, consulting partners to produce briefing papers where their ideas have solidified uh, in the context of the project, which would serve as a basis for the design of the uh, conference, of the main conference, for organizing consultations, uh, webinars, personal gatherings where we can interact with you, understand your perspectives, and learn as much as we can from them. And then after the main conference, to also give inputs to the final report, uh, so that we could, you would have an opportunity to contribute uh, in writing what you think is really important, so we're sure that it's taken into account at the time of the project, the final report. And after the main conference, we'd also be looking at how we can work together uh, and in what form, how we can have an alliance of those who really, uh, who really buy into this idea that yes, it's not enough we lead in a field. Uh, it, it, we have to figure out a way uh, to lead uh, a group at the, uh, from that, that's all encompassing, that doesn't have any limits or categories or divisions in it. So, with that, I'd just like to mention uh, the kind of questions we would like to discuss. One of the things we'd like to know is examples from your experience of highly e effective leadership at the global level. I mean, if you're from an international organization where you see something that's been done that has had global outreach. That doesn't mean we're not, in, we are also interested in effective leadership at the national level or at any community level that has gone beyond leadership within a norm, an institution to leadership of, a, of the society at any level. 
but I, I, I lead with the global level because that's really the territory we're trying to influence and many of you have been doing things on that basis. Secondly, if we look at that experience, those success stories, and many of the success stories have been told, but I'm not sure, at least for the world in general, that we've always understood the principles behind those successes, the principles that we could take and apply uh, to other contexts effectively. We do things, we succeed. It doesn't mean that we fully understand how we succeeded or why, or we can tell somebody else how to do the same thing. It requires a, a different level of awareness of conceptualization uh, that comes after the experience usually, not during it. Uh, so uh, we'd like to help, we'd like to work with you and learn to think about your successes and what we can learn from it that could be transferable to other areas. Then third, innovative leadership in initiatives your organization is currently working on. Maybe it's not something that has made the headlines in terms of measurable impact now, but we also encourage you to reflect on the role your organizations are trying to play now in being in a, a leadership movement at a wider level. And then uh, and insights based on your experience. What do you see that could be done to enhance and accelerate global progress on any of the challenges that we face today? In other words, your knowledge and experience, which is not yet fully institutionalized in the strategies that are being employed. What can we learn from that? Because let's start with what, uh, with what we know already and then think of extending that knowledge to other areas. And then fifth, What's the kind of change in thinking we need in order to unleash effective action? What type of thinking should we be giving our engineers and our scientists to understand not just the fields of expertise within which they're working, but the, the social context in which they're working and the implications and ramifications of the introduction of new technologies in any field on the wider society? That essentially was one of the rationale for the founding of the World Academy, because uh, uh, scientists in, of different types realized that our education is not preparing us to live in a global, interconnected, highly complex society. So what do we have, what do we have to learn about the way we think and change the kind of education we're giving and the kind of thinking that we're teaching? And finally, uh, what can we do to change the way we think about mobilizing social initiative. We have many successful examples in isolated fields. What can we learn from that about mobilizing social participation at the global level uh, to address all of these challenges?